Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Mark from TCG Discussions coming out with a discussion video today. We're going to quickly talk about the Dragon Ball bands that dropped and my thoughts on it. Um, so, we got three bands. <laughs> it, this is so easy. Three bands, two limits, one errata that really matters. All the other erratas are kind of just like card text fixes. They don't really change what like the effects were meant to do, I guess. Um, so, let's uh, work our way back up. So, starting with the erratas. Um... The SS4 Arata to Vegeta, it literally basically means nothing because the deck's always looking to charge multicolors anyway. Um, I'm not sure if that really hurts the curve of the deck with the card, but overall, it's still going to be a really good card. And if it hinders it a little bit, it's like not much for hindering. So, um, yeah, no, not really it, uh, anything big to talk about with that. Um, the other Arata's, like I said, are card fixes, so let's uh, move on to the limits. Um, there's one really good one and one that everybody just hates and says is bad. Uh, but I kind of foresee like uh, this direction going. And I, I actually eventually see like all three counter plays just being phased out of the game. Um, with the rate they're going, I just think that this, that's probably a healthy way to go, especially with what happened to Blue and the fact that Black has never had one. So I think that like it would be a pretty fair and balanced thing to just like remove all those counter plays in the game and like stick like niche counter plays each color and just see like what they do so um let's talk about charismatic for a second so charismatic is a really random one and um a lot of people think that this auto kills green i have no idea what you're talking about now i do understand with what happened with green gohan when we get to the bands but like green's still not dead like i think go bros is still like an incredibly solid and broken deck <laughs> solid and broken probably like a little bit of an oxymoron there, but um, I just want to explain like the the variant of Gobros that I brought to the channel um, and that I play uh, with uh, Paternal Unison, um, uh, Field Spell, and one drop with Leader Revive. Okay, like I just want to talk about those like um, four cards and like the interaction. Okay, so. If this doesn't sound good to you, then you just don't like good math in card games. And I've been playing a lot of One Piece lately, so the math game has gotten a lot better. I actually think it's maybe a better Dragon Ball player. I kind of felt like uh, my decision making and like self-consciousness is just completely removed. And I'm like actually way better at Dragon Ball than, uh, than ever. But either way, uh, back to the topic at hand. So... The Field Spell plus the Leader Effect to bring back a one drop is a free draw too. If Bodark Paternal Unison is on the board, your opponent minimum is in a three-card swing differential every turn. You draw two, they guarantee lose a card out of their hand. If you swing and they combo and you sack that combo, it doesn't matter what it is, again, they are losing cards. So this is a four-card swing. And when you get to the later turns, like the curve for playing these three cards, right, so... The curve for Awakening, uh, which is to, like to play the field spell, uh, the Z extra card down, one field spell, and the unison basically leaves you with one energy on turn three, and then you're golden for the rest of the game. At turn four, you should be starting to play like your bigger bombs, and you're going to see the bigger bombs by that point, and some floodgates to like help you get there, right? Especially at three energy, like at three energy, when you have three, you play Paternal for two, and you play like... Um, you have like dormant in your hand, right? Like it doesn't matter what they commit an attack to. They are not killing you from six life. It's just not going to happen. Not on two attacks. It would have to be something absurd. Like, you know, you are number one and we are number one or something like that. And, or you are number one or whatever it is. And then like the Goku and like something absurdly bad would have to go wrong in order for you to like lose the game, which again, I just don't think is really going to happen. So it basically guarantees that you're going to go to turn four. And turn four is where this stuff gets, like, really, really stupid, okay? So I just want to, like, pitch a scenario for with you. If the Bodar Paternal Unison lives, uh, what happens? Okay, so, like, just, like, what happens in that scenario? So turn four, you draw for turn, you charge whatever, you bring back your one drop, you get two. And then you proceed to... Um, Sack the one drop off, make them pitch a card. And this is all cost you zero energy to do. So again, they've now discarded two cards from turn three. I, I, I shouldn't even count that. They've just discarded a card, you've drawn two. So that's a three, three card swing. 
I play the eight drop Goku Gohan. Okay. I swing, I pop a card knowing barrier, they pitch a card. That's four. It's a four card swing. They combo it all or take it. If they combo, I sack another card. That's five. I have two open energy. If I play down a Goku, right, that um, make the five drop Goku promo that makes them pitch a card, that's six. Okay. You've discarded four cards from your hand and I've drawn two. In what universe, right, in what universe, if I've made, so again, I'm going to map out the play for you, bring back, draw two, sack, ditch one, make them pitch, five drop, okay, five drop swings, they combo, just pitch a card, five, Goku six, and you have one energy up for a negate. Unceasing Awakening Rage, Dormant, what have you. It doesn't matter. It just actually doesn't matter. The math is so bad in that differential. Okay, like, let's say you play Zamasu on top of that. Like, you sack the one energy because you still have Bardock, right? Like, you're not, you may not even need that one energy because you play Dormant for free and your Unceasing Awakening Rage for free. Right? The math differential and hand loss to your opponent is so great every turn that it, and it exponentially climbs right because if they don't have the goku gohan that's another minus on top of whatever you replay they're screwed this is not including what they have to combo to get out of like any attacks so in that one turn you've lost you've had a you've lost four cards with a six card differential swing if this keeps up for two turns your opponent has no hand they've lost but mean, meanwhile, you still have a ton of cards while completely stopping your opponent and making them check everything at the door and what they want to do. So it blows the game wide open. I know um, I've received comments uh, and uh, you know about Black. Black is just the killer. I've played Mechigabura, SS4, and Fu with GoBros, and I've thrashed all of them. Like, the last Mechigabura player I played, he had no hand, and I crafted a kill turn from five energy where they just died. They just died. <laughs> like, like you know, five energy with uh, everything out on the board, and they had, like, four or five life left. It was over. That's the other thing. To get advantage, the deck doesn't even need to attack you, right? Like, at all. You can literally focus board control at swings at you and just basically make the game bad for them, right? So, this idea that, it's, that green's bad because it doesn't have charismatic is just absurd right? You still get to play Dora for free. You still have the one charismatic villain. So it's kind of like an SCR. Like if you have it, you see it, like you just save it to like the key play over like having multiples to be able to do whatever you want all the time. So there's just no real reason to say that green is bad. Um, now green Gohan is screwed, but again, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, going on to the, uh, Moving on from that to the limit to the Goku Vegeta that is one drop double strike. I completely agree with this. It was a completely stupid card. They should have never printed it. I know it makes yellow a lot weaker and everybody hates that, but like the card was dumb. It was a negate caught negate pop should not have existed the way that it did. It was very, very poorly designed. I am very glad that they got rid of it because a one drop 20 gate double strike that basically minuses a card off the board is essentially thwarting without being 25k and warping a card, right? With far less setup, right? You just have to be a yellow leader, right? Like, like it was honestly one of the strongest one drops in the game if you stop and think about it. So, um, yellow takes a significant hit there and it's quite honestly deserved. Uh, moving on to the three for the band though. Okay, uh, let's start with the... Uh, Hmm, where should we start? That is a great question. I don't know if I want to go into a long explanation of what happened with Golden and Gohan. Let's start with the stupid one. Yeah, let's let's start with that. Um, Hit the Revoker being banned was so random and out of left field and made absolute no sense to do whatsoever, okay? Hit as a counterplay coming into the board one required you to have three open energy as if red didn't just say thanks man here's this and uh 
yeah, it's called, you know, uh, what is it? Oh, uh, Brawly Crown. Although, I guess if you do tap three, the other one will resolve. So, uh, that's, that's probably okay. Um, but anyway, usually three open energy is a death sentence. And an Aegis at two, it's still kind of a death sentence. So, um, um, but moving on, it, it was really random just because the only reason that card got banned was because of Gogeta. Most people didn't even know the card existed until this deck came out. And most people still didn't play it after the deck came out. So I have no idea why that card was banned. Um, it also looks very, very bad that Bergamo, despite seeing repetitive competitive play since its inception, from a 4-of down to a 1-of, as a 1-of tech that just can absolutely swing and blow a game out of the water, has somehow survived. And the competitive, vi competitive viability of Hit the Revoker has seen zero play till this deck came out. And it changed nothing because it still pretty much sees zero play and will now continue to see zero play. Whereas Bergamo, for example, is still at one. So why did we go in this direction? I really don't know. Uh, moving on to Green Gohan's hit, which is the ban of the one drop 16 that stacks the Z, Z stacks the uh, uh, Z leader that allows you to awaken. This hit is extremely significant. Um, one, it's going to make you getting into your Z leader much harder, which is not good. Okay. Uh, other people will get to their Z energy, uh, Z leaders much faster than you, uh, properly on curve and when they want to, uh, because I, the level of commitment for the Z, Z battle card, I think is just a little too high price to pay. Uh, number two, uh, the block on it is nuts, right? Um, it can be a blocker and it does not have to die. It's also not affected by anything other than it, like its own effect, I think. And so essentially like you could block and protect it and not force a Z awaken in a, an attack that's like really bad. Um, and then combo on it, get the, the plus with the, um, effect before you go into the Z awaken. It's just a way to get more card draw. Um, but if you fully protect it, like you still have it until your opponent, like force gets rid of it, which would then just force your leader to become harder to attack. So like, it's a pretty big deal. Like, um, like I said, it's a blocker that's like very hard to interact with. Um, it being unaffected by your opponent's card effects and having deflect. And then furthermore, it is going to just, after getting rid of it, whether it was from block or getting rid of it via an effect, um, well, I'm not sure. Is it on effect? Is it on effect by effects? I feel like you can get rid of the blocker. I think you can get rid of the blocker. I think that statement is wrong. I think you can actually get rid of the blocker. I haven't played Gohan in a long time, but bottom line is, is that it was really stupid because you got punished for getting rid of their blocker, right? Like, you, like your opponent got harder to kill. So. That and coupled with peace resolution, making the card a 40k double strike off, off a restamp was like really stupid. So I think that like that play is going to be a lot harder to do. Gohan could still see some niche tier three success in its play lines because I th still think what it does is really stupid. It's just that the investment in the Z battle card, which gives it a lot of power, is just for filter number one and like number two. Um, the other thing that like you take away with a slower access Z leader is the ability for the combo on the Goku to make them burn a life. And I think that that is another reason why like it's pretty bad. So um, Go Green Gohan, rightly so, uh, needed to be axed. Uh, for those of for those of you who are not aware about how powerful and often Green Gohan has been winning, um, Green Gohan's tops and wins basically rival the combination of sin and gogeta like it's pretty bad like um like that one deck was is, is nearly as bad as both of those decks combined so um and i i've, I've like literally like done the uh i've you can just go watch Lookout's channel. Uh, he has the pie charts and everything. Like, he can show you how successful Green Gohan is and how much it's topped. It's basically, like, if you're playing Green Gohan, your, your chances of topping, like, exponentially increase over every other deck. It's not funny. 
Unless you're playing this next deck that uh, also got axed. And I mean really axed because you can't play leader anymore. And that is set one Golden Frieza. Bandai. Thank you. You've done it. You've screwed around with my Dark Brawly. You banned my Red Gogeta, even though, you know, we're sad about these two things. This banned Golden Frieza. Which should probably come along with Soul Striker eventually, but Golden Frieza. My God, did this need to happen? Okay, like it, I mean, it really needed to happen. Um, I saw with a buddy of mine actually like yesterday, and same thing that Golden Frieza is not that bad. I mean, it's not that bad when you play it into Black because Black has the ability to disrupt the drop area and warp what's on the board. Which means they can never get access to it with Unison, which is one of the reasons like Golden Frieza has like a weird pivot position into it. But it's still really, really bad because of the Unison. And like um the Gohan Unison. And like people really do not understand how strong that leader is. Okay, so if you think that Golden Frieza was not the de facto best yellow deck in the game, and arguably a top three deck in the game. Let me break this down for you. Every single turn that Golden Frieza lived, they got to draw two cards and untap two energy. That means whatever energy you're playing with is essentially two more. In a deck full of negates, floods, like Mecha Frieza, Robotic Repost, the Vegito if they played it, Flying Nimbus, so on and so forth. You see where I'm going with this. That two energy open... In a deck designed, Cold Bloodless, in a deck designed to, one, have counterplay, so Sin, two, uh, uh, Sin, Cold Bloodlust, um, two, Flood You, that punishes you for playing the game in a very severe way. Like, resting cards on Swing is a pretty powerful effect. It can affect energy, it can affect battle cards that could be Swinging. So again, super powerful. And vice, and to top it off, that Mecha Frieza can then swing at you and then be sacked for the effect to draw another card and untap two energy, right? This is all before I get into how it can craft a turn to kill you, okay? At five energy, you can play a unison down, okay? For four, sack a card or, you know, you know sack a card off that's already on the board and then untap two energy and play another one. And you are looking at a minimum of three 25k single strikes. Three 25k single strikes again. And then one 25k leader swing. And they drew two cards. The fact that it also could steal markers off the unison that generally brought a card back to use to sack it off is a problem, right? And this is all before the fact that Golden Cooler, with this combination of, of, of nonsense, provided an alternative win condition that was completely and utterly insane. Reducing your opponent's hand size, no matter what, to five, and saying have one of your very few color outs to this card or lose the game outright is stupid. Okay, it forces your opponent to overcommit on attacks by expending a lot of cards in hand, freezes drawing two cards a turn while getting two energy back, and this is all before I talk about its awakened turn. Its awakened turn is a draw five on tap three. Okay, you untap draw one, you draw two to awaken, you draw on swing, you draw, and then untap two more. Draw five on tap three for an awakened turn should not exist. It just should not exist from the leader alone, okay? If everything I have explained in the last four to five minutes has not convinced you that Golden Frieza was the best deck of yellow, it's not close. Every single tournament, nearly, it's topped or won. Nearly every single tournament in this format, it is either topped or won. It has been the only deck to really rival Gohan, in terms of sheer power. Like, it just is not played enough. But it is it, it dwarfs every other yellow deck. There's no way Majin Vegeta can keep up when 
it literally just expends far more energy to run into the same floodgate problems, right? Like you want to swing your Vegeta, well, here's a blocker, or here it, with the unison, or here's a negate, here's flying Nimbus, and you don't play any unison, so it basically turns off your whole turn on your next battle card swing, right? Swung with lead, oh, that's a real punish with Nimbus because now you only get one. What are you really popping with your your Gogeta, uh, your Gogeta, your Vegeta, right? Your Vegeta Goku, nothing. Your Vegeta, same thing. The Sin promo is more broken in that because of its not only its playability, but the fact that it can block twice and essentially shut the v v Vegeta like out of the game, coupled with a floodgate. Which again, it's going to punish you far more with, right? Um, and the over combo of from 25 is a simple 5k, um, unless you over combo on it to get rid of the card, which they're going to save. And it has a walking floodgate, like negate effect, and to top it off, cold blood loss, all these other things. Um, and then it just gets to cooler, forces off your hand, and the Z energy says, go into your Z leader or a bus because you're literally about to lose the game. Even then, the Z leader does not protect you from the unison alt art variant of defeating you with the deck, so it doesn't do anything. Um, Ape Ku is a little bit different, although I will say Golden Cooler warping the entire board ignoring barrier is a pretty big deal. So uh, Ape Ku kind of cries at that. And then furthering from there... Um, I think that can be a little bit more of a closer grind, but I just think that Frieza is just far more efficient, draws more cards with accessibility. It can handle your board until you get to a state where you just auto lose. Um, and then moving on from there, uh, you know, Spirit Bomb, Vegito, Golden Frieza and Spirit Bomb are not even in the same conversation of tier they're not like spirit bomb is really good it's not anywhere near touching golden frieza there's no point in even discussing or talking about it so bottom line is golden frieza is an incredibly dominant deck was a an incredibly dominant deck and deserved to be banned at every single level of competitive viability that you can imagine was it efficient with its energy absolutely did it play the best cards of its color absolutely did it have the ability to have a very powerful awaken turn? Like I said, draw five on tap three is pretty good. So yes, um, could it play the best generic yellow cards? Yes. Was the package of in-game engine like, like super taxing in order for you to play it? Like for example, like skill is Goku, right? Or you know, Spirit Bomb Vegito. You got bricks. You have stacking. That means there's cards that you're not going to be using that you could have used. All these other things. Answer to that being, not really, because the engine is cards that draw you more cards. So, I mean, like, your Frieza army card helps set up Mecha Frieza, gets you a cantrip from the deck that draws you a card, then it's sacked off to untap another energy to draw another card, which is then used to pay a cantrip that draws another card. So, like, you, like all of your engine, aside from the unison, is just a 12-card engine, basically, or 16 card engine, that 16 card engine replaces itself for 75% of it. So there, there's just, and there's no end in sight to like how good that is. So, and then the other thing is the other part of the engine is fuel for what will eventually become one of the win conditions of the deck, as well as consistency for your leader to have access to untapping energy and drawing cards. So I, again, the answer is, you know, it it it's was this engine a hindrance to it? No, it wasn't. And um I mean we're talking about a leader that doesn't even need a 20k Z leader, which is now basically a pretty gold standard for the top decks. Um and yeah, it didn't even need it. Because it was like that good, right? It just turns out that drawing five cards and untapping three energy is really good. Right. And that was also something else, like you try to control Golden Frieza by controlling when it awakened, and you got yourself into a good position in order to take them out of the game with a huge, strong knockout blow to their life that says, beat me on the next turn, or you ought to lose to my full investment, right? But if they could self-awaken, 
it didn't matter. And there's lots of dumb cards to do that. Like the Roshi, for example. You know, I, we, I, I don't need to go through all of it. Like, you get it. And the bottom line is, is that, like, the weakness of the deck was a hyper-aggressive strategy. It kind of dies to critical. Um, so, like, Red Brawly would be, like, a niche deck that might do something against it. Uh, I say might because, like, while hand ripping and swinging for crit, like, it can be kind of powerful, but, like, also at the same time, it's like, come on, Red Brawly, come on, come on. So, excuse me, just some niche things to think about with that. And then incorporating everything into crafting a good, viable, uh, solid win strategy, absolutely. The top end, absolutely good. Um, you can play the best of yellow. And it will continue to abuse the best of yellow. It will continue to abuse freezer army of any color. It does not matter, right? Like it could be green, red, it could be blue, it could be purple. If they ever came out with it, it would not matter. Okay, it just would not. Uh, it could be black. It could be black freezer cards, and it still wouldn't matter. And uh, yeah, it was just a deck that needed to go. It just I was sick of seeing it. I was so tired of them like addressing new decks like. Like, when they banned Gogeta and Sin and let Golden Freeze live, I was just livid. I'm sure you guys saw, um, I'm sure you guys saw my video on that. If, if you don't, I just go back and watching it because it was probably the rant that people disagree with the most. Because I'm out here trying to defend Gogeta and then talking about how Yellow is just going to take over. And then Green Gohan came around and just basically did the same thing that Sin and Gogeta were doing. And so, um, Golden Freeze said, wait a second, counter slap, and then... You know, uh, they just continue to slap each other back and forth and con climbing and contending for top spots until Mikey Cabrera support came out. Then it got kind of bad for your for, for Golden Freeza because uh, removing their ability to revive one drops is uh, pretty easy to do. And removing them from play means that they can't get them back later. So that's pretty good. Sherman Salsa also saw some pretty good uh, play play against that. But um, then they came up with your bros too. So then it was like, mm, I don't know. Because uh, Free is losing a lot of cards. And I don't really ever have to attack you. So uh, where we're at is that, um, you know, this ban list was really good. But it had some random stuff. Like the Charismatic and Hip Revoker didn't really need to happen. Uh, the bans, the Golden Frieza and the Android 16 were completely beyond justified. They were the top two decks in the game, in my opinion. And both need to be nerfed out of existence. Um, I think that it's going to be primarily a black meta now. Black has been like the strongest color for a while. The only problem with black is that it runs heavy into Cooler Mill, which will just absolutely wax it no matter what. You sit down against Cooler Mill, your game's over. It's it's just bad. It should be really bad for you unless they brick and, uh, and or you put on enough aggression to beat them down early so that they can't like get to their high end plays with like lots of energy. Um, Another thing is that aside from black, I think the best deck of black right now is Mechie Kabura. Um, I think that's a pretty unanimous consensus at this point. I think it's now one, uh, two or three regionals. Um, and I think in NA Nats, not, not in NA Nats, but Asian Nationals. So um, the average support for it is insane. I actually just piloted it yesterday for my locals and I was curb stomping into the ground. Uh, I played against uh, Go Bros and it Unceasing Awakening Rage me and I just used Leader Effect and said I'm going to just build 5z energy basically this turn while uh, continuously applying pressure so you're either going to combo or take all this life and the next turn when I play a bunch of 30ks like this is just going to get really bad really fast so um, uh, Mechie Gabura is a very flexible deck the new 8 drop is probably the most insane support out of any of the support Aside, like Z Leader is like good but it's kind of mid compared to the 8-drop. The fact that you get to blank a card, steal it, warp a card, ignoring barrier, your opponent has to warp a card out of your other hand, it's a 3-tempo swing. And there, I can't say and it's a 3k dual attack with deflect. And then with the little 1-drop guy, it gets barrier. Like, I, I, what more do you want out of a card? Uh, my opponent counterplayed um, in my final round. I played against uh, Brawly. And my opponent goes to counterplay with a Frieza that can like block twice but can't be KO'd. But I can just warp a card ignoring barrier after I stole his 8-drop Brawly from him. 
um, a drop green red brawl. He was playing like some niche evolve engine where it like got to do stuff. But unfortunately, the shins that I main deck actually, I, I didn't even know what a sec was trying to do. But my shins like warded him off in the middle of it. And then when he finally played it, like he just lost the card the next turn back to me. He gave me a 35k swing and a two 30k swings. And he lost the card from hand. And then he played the Frieza and then he lost that card. Uh, yeah, it's really stupid. So. Um, oh, also, one, one more thing about Mikey Burra. It has access to Evil Saiyan, you know, Mal, uh, Malice Made Flesh, the best black SCR. I'm sick and tired of seeing this, like, Mikey Gaburra 40k dual attack. It's good, but, like, it's not, I get to look at your life and rip a card and take you down to one with my whole board good, right? Like, and everyone's like, two energy is just way too much. I don't know whoever said that two energy is too much, but, like, if... If Red can find a way to play SSB Vegeta and crit a life, I'm pretty sure for four energy, I'm pretty sure for two, right? Two and my ability to warp a card, warp a life, play a card, and anytime you play a card that is seven or less, I basically can steal it from you. I don't really think that that's going to be a bad card for two energy, right? That's some great investment. Just play more efficiently. Stop investing in cards that you probably shouldn't be investing into anyway. So um, that pretty much does it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around for the discussion. I hope you liked the video, and I will see you in the next one. Laters, have a good one.